March 1938. Hitler invades Austria. The Third Reich begins to flex its military muscle. Later that year, German scientists discover fission of the uranium nucleus, bringing the Third Reich one step closer to discovering the secret of the atomic bomb. Fear of German research stimulated activity in the United States and England. Fear that German scientists could produce weapons of great devastation. In the fall of 1939, Dr. Albert Einstein wrote his now famous letter to President Roosevelt, explaining the urgency of work on uranium fission. Roosevelt, a man of action, moved swiftly. An advisory committee on uranium was appointed. German forces invade Poland, plunging the nations of Europe into a second world. Ahead lay the greatest campaign of all, invasion of the Japanese homeland and close-in, desperate fighting. That this fanatical enemy would not quit until her last fighting man had been driven from his cave and killed had been established time and again by bitter experience. drop down to the bottom. It will not blow out the bottom of the sea and let all the water run down the hole. It will not destroy gravity. I am not an atomic playboy, as one of my critics labeled me, exploding these bombs to satisfy my personal whim.
The Mile High City of Los Alamos, the Atomic City. This is a modern Pueblo created by the people of the United States as a research and development center for atomic weapons. Since any we talk is a distant and primitive area, men have to leave their stateside laboratories and homes for a period running into months. Since 1943, when Los Alamos was established, men from this mesa have left the continental limits of the United States to test the weapons they have created. It is essential that no country gain ascendancy over the United States in the development, manufacture, and tactical use of atomic weapons.
let us consider the results of a powerful thermonuclear explosion at the Pacific Proving Grounds in the Marshall Islands, 11 degrees north of the equator. The huge cloud soars up, punches through the tropopause, and finally spreads and stabilizes as high as 70 or 80,000 feet, entirely within the stratosphere layer. This brings us to the most widely discussed fission product, strontium-90. Chemically similar to the soil calcium with which it becomes mixed, the strontium-90 follows calcium through its regular cycles into our plant food and into the bones, meat, and milk of our plant-eating animals. Reaching our own bodies, the strontium-90, like calcium, tends to be concentrated in our bones, particularly those of children who are building new bones. The radiation from strontium-90 has extremely short range in the body, so it causes no genetic threat to the reproductive cells. It does pose a threat to the bone marrow and the bone itself in the form of either leukemia or bone cancer. These pictures, enlarged from 16 millimeter for your theater screen, are the first to show the hand raising which makes history in Russia. For it marks the approval by the Supreme Soviet of Nikita Khrushchev's rise to the premiership and power that was once Stalin's. The free world awaits the obvious diplomatic thrusts, the first coming barely four days later. Russia announces it is suspending further nuclear tests, a statement which the U.S. brands a propaganda maneuver. The United States is prepared, unless testing is resumed by the Soviet Union, to withhold further testing on its part of atomic and hydrogen weapons for a period of one year from the beginning of the negotiations. has exploded his giant bomb in cynical disregard of the United Nations. By this act, the Soviet Union have added injury to insult. They broke the moratorium on nuclear weapons testing. They have raised atmospheric pollution to new heights. They have started a new race for more deadly weapons. They have spurned the humanitarian appeal of the United Nations and of all peace-loving peoples. They have advanced no solid justification for exploding this monstrous and unnecessary weapon. They have been wholly unmoved by the dangers of radioactive fallout to the human race. The United States delegation deeply deplores this contempt for world opinion. And we think that in the light of this somber development, other delegations may wish to express their views on this shocking and distressing news. For today, Mr. Chairman, the world has taken a great leap backward toward anarchy and disaster. Someone 